We're continuing the Onslaught build series here on the channel, going over some of the best builds to take into the Onslaught activity. And in this video, we are back on the Hunter. For your Warlock and Titan mains, don't worry, I already have some builds here on the channel for you to take into Onslaught on top of some other Hunter builds that I've dropped. I'm gonna continue making more builds for the activity. So if you don't wanna miss any, be sure to subscribe. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. To be honest, I didn't think Strand Hunter was gonna be a solid option for Onslaught, but I was honestly proven wrong, especially when pairing the Strand subclass with the exotic Bow Tracer. With this perk, Relentless Tracker, damaging a powerful combatant or guardian with an ability grants you a temporary bonus to weapon damage matching your subclass type. Now, essentially, if you damage a major or above, so any orange or yellow bars with an ability, you get times four Strand Weapon Surge times four. That is a big bonus to those strong weapons. And then defeating that target with a weapon matching the damage type of your subclass creates an elemental pickup. Since we're on strand, it would create a tangle. It's just crazy that we get times four weapon surge from just damaging a target. Under the Threadrunner subclass for the Super Silk Strike, it leaves much to be desired. To be honest, it's an ad clear super, but even then, once you get past round 30 up to 40, all the way to the final rounds, it gets really tough out here with the super and trying to damage some of those yellow bar bosses, it barely even tickles them. But that's not the main portion of the build. Let's talk about abilities. First up, I'm going with Marksman Dodge. So when I dodge, it reloads the weapon in my hand. For my movement, I'm going triple jump, but you can use what you like. We only have the one melee, which is threaded spike that will hit multiple targets and sever. And if you press your melee button on its way back, you can actually get some of that melee energy back. And then lastly, I'm going with the shackle grenade, mainly to suspend those targets. And just in case we run into unstoppables, you could go with the grapple if you'd like, but to be honest, I do not want to use it and then hit some exploder shanks or curse thralls and then blow myself up. For our aspects, Whirling Maelstrom is a big one. So destroying a tangle will weave a violent writhing mass of strand fibers. The strand mass seeks out and damages targets, emitting unraveling projectiles when it defeats them. This counts as an ability hilariously enough. So as long as this thing damages any orange or yellow bar targets, it will proc the Foe Tracer perk. For our second aspect, we're using Widow's Silk, so we get an extra grenade charge, which means we get two Shackle Grenades. For our fragments, first up, Thread of Generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. It is a minus 10 to discipline, but any damage we do with our weapons and abilities will give us grenade energy. Next up, Thread of Warding. Picking up an Orb of Power grants Woven Mail. It's a minus 10 to resilience, but Woven Mail gives you an extra layer of damage resistance on top of 100 resilience, which is pretty good. Next up is Thread of Mind. Defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. So any target we suspend with the shackle grenades will give us our marksman dodge back faster. Then lastly for the setup, I personally like Thread of Fury. So damaging targets with a tangle grants melee energy. It's a minus 10 to strength. What's pretty cool is the impact from the tangle will give us melee back on top of any damage Whirling Maelstrom does will also slightly give us some melee energy back. Now. If you didn't want to rock Thread of Fury here, I did kind of test this out, but Thread of Continuity is a solid option. So Suspend, Unravel, and Sever effects applied to targets have an increased duration. So all of those Strand debuffs will last longer. And then you could switch out Marksman Dodge for Gambler's Dodge. So when you dodge your target, we can get the Threaded Spike back. After some testing, there is a reason why I'm using Marksman Dodge with Thread of Fury, and it's because of my primary weapon, which I'll talk about when we get to weapon options. Under the artifact, go ahead and toss on Flame, Fiber, and Freeze for that Solar Strand Siphon mod that we're going to put on the helmet. And then for your Solar Weapons, definitely toss on Flint Striker so those rapid Solar Weapon Precision hits and Final Blows will give us Radiant. Now that will give us two bonuses. Number one, being Torch, so we'll deal increased weapon damage to combats affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs. We're going to be having a decent amount of Strand debuffs on the field, so while we're Radiant, it's free increased weapon damage. And then with race precision while radiant, solar precision final blows will cause combatants to ignite. That is a free ignition proc just from getting that precision final blow. For the strand portion, go ahead and toss on unraveling orbs. So picking up an orb power grants strand weapons unraveling rounds, which can pop anti-barrier champions. But this is gonna be another reason for this because of horde shuttle damaging unraveled targets with a weapon occasionally spawns a threadling. So any target that's affected by unravel at any capacity just being damaged can spawn a Threadling, so that's an extra buddy on the field to help you out. I'm also putting on Blast Radius because I am using a Rocket Launcher and a Grenade Launcher, so if I get some final blows rapidly, it'll give me a free armor charge. I'm also using Overload Rocket Launcher since this is going to be the only way I can send Overload Champions, but if you have a teammate that can do it, you could put 
something like Dragon's Bite on, but I personally like Overload Rocket. And then lastly, I tossed on Wished Into Being. So while my super is nearly fully charged, Ability Final Blows will spawn Orbs of Power. Before we dive into armor mods, let's talk about what stats to focus on. So first up, we talk about every video, try to have tier 10 100 resilience. It's gonna give you a 30% damage reduction, and we definitely want that in something like Legend Onslaught. Next, I would focus on Discipline. Discipline is tied to how fast we can get that grenade back, and we definitely want those Shackle grenades back as quickly as possible. And then next, you could focus on mobility, which is tied to how fast we can get the dodge back, especially with Gambler's Dodge. Again, that means you really wouldn't need to focus on strength for the melee, but to be honest, the big one here is resilience and discipline. On the helmet, I'm rocking that Solar Strand Dual Siphon mod, so if I get Rapid Final Blows with Solar and Strand weapons, it'll create Orbs of Power. Then I'm also using Special Ammo Finder and Scout. Now, there's a reason I'm using Special Ammo Finder for my primary weapon. It's going to be a Strand weapon, and we definitely want a lot of Special Ammo for it. And then, you know, especially on my scout to help out my teammates, I might as well do that. On the gauntlets, I'm using impact induction. So whenever I use my power melee attack, it reduces my grenade cooldown. And then with focusing strike and bolstering detonation, whenever I deal damage with my melee and my grenade, it gives me a reduction to my class ability. Now you could switch one of these ones out for something like harmonic loader. So I can have the increased reload speed for strand weapons, but that is up to you. On the chest piece, I'm using harmonic and solar reserve so I get more special ammo for my strong weapon and more heavy ammo for my solar weapon. And then I'm using arc resistance, but you can kind of switch these around if you'd like, depending on the burn and whatnot. But personally, I would recommend at least one of these reserve mods depending on what weapons you're using. On the boots, I'm rocking recuperation so I get health back each time I pick up an orb of power. This is really the only way to get health back with this subclass. So this mod is going to be a big help. And then I'm rocking double solar weapon surge. Now, there's no need to rock strand weapon surge because again, with photo Tracer, we get times four for those weapons automatically. So whenever I pull up my solar weapons, I might as well have that free bonus as long as I have armor charges. But essentially your solar weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. Now, when you collect orbs of power, you'll gain armor charges. With this build, you're gonna have a maximum of three. And with any of these blue mods, it makes that armor charge last 10 seconds. So at three armor charges, we have 30 seconds of this solar bonus weapon damage. And then last on the class item, I'm using Reaper. So shortly after using my class ability, my next weapon final blow will spawn an orb of power. I'm also using powerful attractions. So when I dodge, any orbs around me will automatically get collected. So that will proc recuperation, armor charges, all that stuff. And then lastly, I'm using outreach here. So it reduces my melee cooldown when using my class ability. Now I would recommend bomber as well as a substitute here, especially if you're using gambler's dodge. For your weapon options in the primary slot, I would highly recommend Tusk of the Board. Now, this is the new strand waveframe grenade launcher from Iron Banner. So if you haven't played Iron Banner yet, definitely farm one out because it could come with the perk chain reaction. So each final blow with this weapon creates an elemental damage explosion. But it's pretty cool. If you have unraveling orbs with this, it'll also cause unravel, which means any target that gets damaged by it will also create threadlings. So having this one special weapon, especially allowing it to have times four weapon surge, can just wipe out waves of enemies by itself. Now, if you don't want Tusk of the Boar, another special weapon option would be something like the Scatter Signal. Again, it could come with Slice for the Sever and Controlled Burst for the extra damage as long as you hit every shot of the burst. This is great for single target DPS and taking out those majors and other yellow bar enemies. The thing is fantastic. If you don't have a strand special, you could go with a strand primary because it can still benefit from the times four weapon surge. Again, in Michael's reference, this is a sidearm from Ruder Nightmares. You know, you have Rufus Fury. Again, it's an auto rifle from Ruder Nightmares. Both those are solid. Again, sidearms get anti-barrier. Autos get overload, which again can deal with two champion types there. I mean, heck, you can go with something like Quicksilver Storm, the mini rockets, and then also the grenade launcher portion can deal a lot of damage. Plus, with that times for a weapon surge, it is a solid option. But personally, I would highly recommend a Tusk of War with Chain Reaction. It's just way too good. And since we're using a special in our primary, for our energy slot, I'd recommend your favorite solar primary. Sunshot, personally, is just super great for ad clear. It just destroys everything. Once you get one kill, it makes everybody else blow up. And once you're Radiant, you get that increased weapon damage on top of, if you get a precision kill, it also causes an ignition. Sunshot is just very good. But if you do want to go with the legendary option, Again, any weapon that can come with something like incandescent is going to be good. I have this Epitone integration. And again, both these hand cannons can come with Unstoppable this season on the artifact. So you can do that. Again, auto rifles, you have Summoner, you have Abyss Defiant. Both these can come with incandescent. For pulses, again, at Hortative here, Heel Clip, incandescent. And again, both these weapon types can handle Overload Champions this season. Callus Mini Tools, Assault option as well. You have plenty of primary options here. For heavy weapons, honestly, use your favorite solar heavy weapon. Again, I have this crafted Apex Predator. Rockets are pretty good, and I'll be able to handle those overload champions with this. If you want something with more precision, again, linear fusions, cataclysmic, briar's contempt, these can be crafted. You have, you know, 
machine guns like Avalanche. I have rewind rounds and target lock on this thing. If you wanted exotic options, Gallahorn is fantastic for ag clears. This thing destroys. Yes, I understand you're not going to be able to like melt bosses with Gallahorn since the nerf. But to be honest, for ag clear potential, it's very good. The reason I like Marksman Dodge with Threat of Fury, because Threat of Fury will give me my melee back pretty quickly, but with my Tusk of the Boar on top of Chain Reaction, I have Slideway, so when I slide, it will also refill the magazine here. So just as an example, let's just go in. We'll hit this target, boom, now we have the Tangle. If we damage targets with this, we'll get some of the melee back. We got the whole melee back there, look at that. So now I can just do this, dodge, do this, slide, do this. <laughs> oh, we have my melee again, let's do that. Oh, there we go, we have another one of those. I could have picked it up and thrown it, but it honestly does not matter. Now see, it's just damaging the Lost Sector boss here. Let's see if we can go get him back. So again, I hit him with this. Now I have times for a weapon surge. Oop, there we go. Killed those guys. Now we have unraveling. Get all the explosions. Just easy mode. <laughs> Even outside of Tusk of the Boar, as you can see, the ability spam is just insane. Being able to take advantage of two suspend grenades. So in case people are getting near the ADU, you have to handle a champion, anything like that, you can use those grenades. And anytime you damage a yellow or orange bar target, you automatically get times four weapon surge. It's so easy. You get woven mail on top of that for extra damage resistance. And when you switch to those solar weapons, those are going to be effective too. As long as you have armor charge, you get times two solar weapon surge. And again, if you're radiant, sunshine gives those bonuses. If you caused unravel with Tusk of the Boar prior and targets are being hit with unravel or sever from the melee anything, if you're radiant, not only do all your weapons get extra bonus damage across, but there's really no downside to this setup other than the super itself. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Onslaught Strand Hunter build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually going to put the dim link for this build in the description. So if you want to copy everything that I'm using, down to the subclass, the armor mods, the weapons, even the drip, if you'd like. I try to make my guardians like match the theme of the setup. So if you want to copy any of that stuff, that will be in the link. And like I said, test this build off for yourself. If there is something that you like using after testing this build out, whether it's a weapon, an armor mod, something like that, definitely let me know in the comments. In any event, if what you saw is valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming Onslaught builds I'm going to be dropping on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream here on YouTube, but also on Twitch and TikTok as well. So if you want help with Legend Onslaught, with the Whisper mission, with Zero Hour, anything that has to deal with this Into the Light event, we're definitely going to be carrying people throughout the entirety of the event. So if you do want some help, hop in the chat. We'll get you in the queue. But if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. That's where people are going to be chatting about Destiny 2, looking for groups. I made an Onslaught LFG role, so if you're looking to do Onslaught and get some other people in to help you, again, that's going to be a really good way to do that. Lastly, if you want to help support the channel even more so I can continue making content for you guys, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription, but it's cheaper than a Twitch subscription, hilariously enough. In any event, you're going to get access to exclusive emotes, monthly badges, and other cool things here on the channel, like early access to every single one of my videos. So if you want more information, all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need all right ladies and gentlemen it's been your boy we'll catch you in the next one Cheers.